bit of this big matchup where the Niners were able to get it done, e even in fact some late rally that the Packers had to make it a game against the San Francisco 49ers? I actually, by the way, I, I've been an Alex Smith supporter for a long time. I just thought uh, he had the tools to be successful. He just needed the coach and the system to be a solid quarterback. And I think it showed yesterday. We saw flashes of brilliance by Alex Smith and this whole entire crew of the 49ers. I think the 49ers, to me, are a step ahead of the Packers, not just because they won yesterday, by the way they controlled the clock. They absolutely dominated the, the ball time, ball possession control. They were controlling the clock. They got a ton of turnovers. I mean, you saw this defenders were baiting Aaron Rodgers to, to throw picks. I mean, there were times, I think Aaron Rodgers could have had one more interception. I, I don't remember the exact instance, but San Francisco just kept baiting and baiting Aaron Rodgers to make certain throws, and they put the pressure cooker on him yesterday. And Alex Smith, yet again, the short passing game is huge for the 49ers. If they can get that short passing game going, if Randy Moss uh, you know, can stretch out the field. I mean, yesterday he got he caught a quick little skinny post right down the middle for a touchdown. He was huge. If they can use the short passing game as a positive tool for this offense, they will open up more things. They will open up the game for themselves to take deep shots down the field, which will result in the big time plays by Alex Smith and this offense. I think this offense will mightily improve for the San Francisco 49ers. Well, as always, it seems, uh, Karen, I agree with everything, you know, you're saying. I think the, the reason they are a step above them is, you know, they finally have receivers on the outside. You know, they made it to the NFC Championship with really not having many weapons in that NFC Championship game. Alex Smith only completed one pass to a wide receiver. And I think the thing that puts them ahead, now they have guys like Randy Moss, Mario Manningham takes a lot of pressure off Michael Crabtree, and he can do his thing. The difference between both these teams with good offenses, you know, good wide receiver play, is the Niners can run the ball. And, yeah, I know the Packers have Cedric Benson, but it's not necessarily going to get it done. I think the thing that puts them over the top is they can match the Packers blow for blow in the passing game, but also have, you know, a Pro Bowl Frank Gore in the backfield. And I think that could be the difference maker if these teams have to meet up again later down in the year. I have to, and I have to say this too. I love the offensive line for the San Francisco 49ers. I felt like they kept Smith upright and he got to deliver those quick short throws in that offense. And I have to say, you know, the 49ers, to me, even though I don't think they're going to win the Super Bowl, uh, I have to say they are the most complete team in the NFL. I think, I think pound for pound, you look at everything that they have, special teams, defense, and offense, the whole complete package. They, I think they are the most complete team in the NFL. But just for some odd reason, I have the feeling, the gut feeling that they don't win the Super Bowl this year. It, I, I can't explain it, but that's just how I feel today. And maybe that will change. That might change in February. That might change in January. So what I say in September really is somewhat irrelevant. And uh, Cameron, uh, obviously a lot of good points, and I chose the 49ers to wing this game over the Green Bay Packers. I thought it'd come down to special teams. I might have been wrong on that, despite, you know, David Akers did make a 63-yard field goal, didn't know that is uh, tying an NFL record, but... Uh, for the Niners, they are now the, a complete team that they weren't last year. And if it weren't for a few botched fumbles uh, by Kyle Williams, the Niners were in the Super Bowl last year. So for uh, San Francisco, it's about getting it done at the quarterback position. And, partner, we could see the Niners making a repeat to the NFC Championship game. Oh, yeah, I could definitely see that. You know, they could make it all the way to the championship. As you said, they were good enough to do it last year, and they've only gotten better since then, bringing in Randy Moss, Mario Manningham, you know, guys like Bruce Miller, their, their fullback is only going to get better after his rookie year. You know, just that defense has stayed together. You know, nothing is as wiltered on that team. You know, they're definitely, I think, Super Bowl or not, you know, that's your preference. But this is a team that will win one to two games in the playoffs, without a doubt. Yeah, I, and by the way, just one quick point. A lot of, a lot of credit to Jim Harbaugh. I, I love his coaching style because – He's got that warrior-type mentality where 
he'll stick with the guys and he won't turn his back when, when things go wrong in the locker room. I like those coaches that will fight for everything you do. The great one, even though Bill Belichick doesn't seem like a raw rah guy, you can see him behind the scenes footage and you could see when he's mic'd up that he really fights for his players. I can go on and on and on. John Harbaugh, I think this coach is perfect for this type of team, especially with these type of personalities. And I, and I have to admit, I think Jim Harbaugh, he puts them in a position, and, and coaching matters late you know, in the NFC Championship and Super Bowl. I think he puts them in a position unlike any other. So thank you very much, and uh, have a great show. Uh, thanks, Cameron, for being on this broadcast, and uh, you're all, always welcome to uh, chime in on hear your thoughts of the Niners football, and uh, it was a big win, Phil, uh, with the Niners over the Packers. Uh, say what you want about Green Bay, but San Francisco now just might have proved that they are, in fact, perhaps the best team in the NFL, and... Um, Perhaps nothing more talented than that new receiving squad, Phil, that has so many weapons. Alex Smith, as long as he can turn down the picks, uh, Super Bowl or not for San Francisco with that big quarterback or in the, and now this new head coach that is getting into the groove of things over in San Francisco. Yeah, again, uh, Cameron, thank you for calling in. He always has good points, and I always like seeing him on the show. But, yeah, I, I can agree. I think I have anything he said there, the uh, – uh, as of right now, maybe it is only on paper, but they are the most complete team in the NFL, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, does the most complete team always win the Super Bowl? No, but it's definitely something to look forward to through the year. You know, this is a team, last year they snuck up on people, but this year everyone knows what they're capable of. You can ask the Packers now that, yes, they're still for real. Last year wasn't a fluke, and now they're going to get everybody's best game. So it'll be interesting to see how they go being the top dog and not flying under the radar. And a little quick uh, game break here. Oakland is up 3 to nothing. San Diego has the ball, 2 minutes, 30 seconds left in the first quarter. And it looks like uh, right now uh, with Rivers to Meacham, the Chargers are right now into the red zone. Uh, we'll keep you updated on that at the final few minutes of our show. We have a quick question over on our Facebook page. Make sure to go to NFL Goal Line with Nick and Phil. That's the title page over on Facebook. Make sure to become a member. We already have 71 new people that are involved on our Facebook page. We're always looking for more guys that you know want to chime in on their thoughts around the National Football League. Grayson Wanless chimes in talk about the Patriots after week one and he wants to know who is better the 49ers or the Patriots after week one obviously New England was able to get it done and make it to the Super Bowl unable to beat the Giants however but um, right now Phil uh, after week one despite a big win uh, with Brady coming back after a you know quick cut to the nose against the lackluster Tennessee squad he did beat the Titans uh, in convincing fashion but Right now, it's it's Super Bowl or not for the Niners, and uh, there's a lot of points behind that. And the Patriots do play in, in fact, the worst conference, I would say, in the AFC. Yeah, I think, you know, to answer the question point blank, if you want to put the Niners against the Patriots right now, you know, I know the Patriots had a pretty good game against Tennessee, but nobody's picking Tennessee to do much this year. And it was Jake Locker's first start. He had some some good plays happen. But overall, you know, here's a guy. He was a little overwhelmed by the situation. I'm sure he'll get better, but that's a different topic. Uh, you know, they beat a team about, you know, where they maybe a, a touchdown or, 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 you know, touchdown to 10 points more than expected. But they all they really did was go out and beat a team that they were supposed to beat, whereas the 49ers took, you know, one of the NFC's best team, you know, in their house, and they, they beat them. So, honestly, if you're going to put the Patriots and the 49ers against each other tomorrow, I'd go with the 49ers. And with good reason, Phil, as now they have a receiving core and you just match up the Eagle or excuse me, the Niners and the Patriots. Obviously, even with they did draft two tremendous line or one linebacker, one defensive lineman that did make a big play against the Titans. Uh, but that defensive secondary over New England, I don't feel can match up against the Niners uh, receiving core. Now they have Randy Moss and Mario Manningham, as you mentioned, Phil. And for the San Francisco 49ers, they match up pound for pound with the Patriots perfectly, I believe, despite that their receiving core is by lengths and strides outside of um, their starting quarterback for the Patriots. Um, lengths and strides above um, the New England secondary, I believe. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Just a quick game break here with the Chargers in the red zone. 
Uh, third and goal, they're trying to reach uh, Antonio Gates, Philip Rivers is. He throws the ball just out of his reach, and it falls incomplete. Uh, Nate Kading is setting up for a field goal, 23-yard attempt. That would tie the game, and it is up and it is good. So with a minute left in the first quarter, uh, the Raiders Chargers tied at three. And that'll be an interesting matchup. We're reaching towards the final few minutes of our show, ladies and gentlemen. You guys still have a chance to chime in. But um, as for this Chargers-Raiders game, you bet you'll be watching that throughout. Uh, the Oakland Raiders are indeed having a strong fight. But it is a tie ball game. And uh, we did mention earlier that uh, me, uh, both Phil and Nick, are both split on this game. And next week on our preview of the – or excuse me, on uh, NFL goal line next week, Monday night, same time. 7 p.m. We'll give our reactions to this big matchup between the Chargers and the Raiders. Lasting thoughts, Phil. Um, I'm putting you on the spot, but which game haven't we talked about that was big in deciding uh, key games down the match or down the stretch? Excuse me. Uh, what big victory will prove vital um, in their squad uh, in the coming weeks? Well, I don't know if this is a vital or even significant win. Uh, down the road but as far as you know headlines wise I think one of the more interesting and underrated topics uh, is what happened with Arizona and uh, Seattle this past week you know here's here's a, a team in Arizona where they have Kevin Cobb and they have uh, John Skelton and Nick I know you're a fan of John Skelton ended up uh, winning the starting job uh, winning you know is a word used uh, loosely here because neither guy really outperformed the other in the preseason they ended up going with John Skelton as many thought they would because the offense does seem to play a little bit better with him but you know in the middle of the game John Skelton who you know had an up and down game gets injured and Kevin Cobb goes into the game and wins the game with uh, you know he goes with the go-ahead touchdown which proves to be the difference maker and the Cardinals go on to win 20 to 16 so it'll be interesting to see what the cardinals do going forward because here's a guy john skelton not playing the best kevin cobb came, uh, came in late in the game with the hot hand and made it uh and and pulled it out for the cardinals so i think if you're an arizona fan it'll be interesting you thought you finally had your little quarterback situation settled and now there's more question marks so in, in arizona still a lot of question marks at the quarterback position and two quick notes to get into this game real quick before we wrap up the show. The Cardinals did, in fact, have their you know nails biting towards the very last second when the uh, referees will possibly get into the show next week. We'll have to see what you guys think throughout the week. But some you know debate going right down to the wire. Uh, the referees did give a fourth timeout to Pete Carroll and the Seahawks. It didn't, in fact, change the outcome. And the Arizona Cardinals, with it's nice to have two quarterbacks under center that can provide. Uh, spark offensively. Uh, the Cardinals get it done 16-20. to 20. We'll go through uh, the quick recap of scores before we wrap up the show. The Cowboys beat the Giants on Wednesday night football. The uh, Dallas Cowboys winning 24-17. Bears win big over Luck and the Colts 41-21. Eagles nail-biting win over the Cleveland Browns by a point. Uh, Detroit Lions nipped the Rams by four points. And the Texans blow out the Dolphins 30-10. to 10. Big win there. Uh, Falcons win big along with the Vikings in overtime. Red Redskins defeat the Saints. Jets win big over the Bills. Uh, New England Patriots 34-13 over the Titans. Obviously, Cardinals win in that close matchup between the Seahawks. The Niners win along with the Buccaneers by 6 points. Broncos beat the Steelers by 11. And then, obviously, the Monday Nighters between the Ravens and the Bengals. 44-13 blowout for the Ravens. We have yet to see the Oakland Raiders and the Chargers rounded out. Thank you all for watching the NFL Goal Line. We are wrapping up our show Final thoughts, Phil. I'm putting you right on the spot, but what did you take out of week one? Well, I'm just, you know, it's obviously glad the football is back. You know, the games that matter, and, and you know, it's definitely going to be a wild up and down uh, year. You know, players to watch, things to see, people in new places. You know, it's never-ending soap opera that is the NFL, and I know we're wrapping up here. Uh, the poll that we put up earlier, the better career, 2-1, uh, uh, to one, uh, we have RG3 winning that Facebook poll here saying that he will have the better career. But overall, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in, and we enjoy your support. And uh, I'll be here, and I know Nick will be here too, and we'll see you next week.
Thanks, guys, for listening to the NFL Goal Line. Nick Rice and Phil Nunziata are the hosts here, and we have this is a very interactive show we hope to have next week. 951-515-4552 is the number to get onto the show. Make sure to tune in next week, Monday night at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern. And throughout the week, NFL Goal Line with Nick and Phil is on Facebook. We have our own very uh, page that we will put below in the link right after the show in the description.